Puzzle Gloves here and this is the 10th video in the Contact from the Ground Up tutorial series and today we are going to cover the performance view. So this big section down here, that's the really cool section, it gives you all your options and stuff. This is your performance view and it varies between libraries and sometimes within the same library. So if we're in the Contact Factory library, this is our performance view for the saxophone section. But if we go up in our file architecture and we go to our Kestrel, or no, you know what, let's go to Choir and we choose some choir thing. We have a very different setup with a different settings. They're pretty similar because it's a, the nature of the instruments uh, the same. So if we mute this one and turn this one on to Omni, you see, and we have a sound and these things all do different stuff. And again, we've talked about the info tab that will give you some hints. I believe these ones actually, each one has its own manual that comes with it in complete. If it's a third party development, it probably has a separate manual for the actual library itself and what stuff does. But if you want to figure out how it works and what it does, this is what you got to do. Um, if, if the setting's not you know, generally a given. Usually when you see sound, it means, you know, it's going to be some sort of an EQ curve. It could be morphing through samples or something weird. A same chord, some sort of chord is going to happen, that type of thing. But if you don't know what it's doing, you can get some hints by going into the edit mode. You'll notice that when you go into edit mode, it only goes into this one instrument's edit mode. And when you, un when you go back out, the other one's still there. But uh, just so you know, you need to be aware of that when you do this stuff. Or at least... That way you know your instruments didn't disappear. And you can go in here and you can look at the script editor and you can get some ideas of what's going on by editing the script and looking at it. And now some scripts may be locked. Um, they may lock them with the password. That's their decision. But you can come in here and get a pretty good idea of what's going on. If you know uh, scripting, if you know C++, you, you'd know enough to get through here. There are other languages. I know C++ and that's pretty much all I know right now, but I know enough to be able to figure out kind of what's going on. You see arrays and stuff, but if you don't know scripting, uh, you're going to need to rely on the help menus and stuff, but the scripting area will give you clues to what's going on in the performance view. It's also very customizable. As you can see, you can change the size. There, I believe there's a maximum size. I forgot what it was, but you can go up to like so far down and you can have different windows open. You can have custom knobs and switches and how they interact you can have a custom background you can even put a logo right here and uh, everything like you can seriously do it all through this background area so when, that's the performance view it allows you to do stuff now I'm going to talk about real quick about something that uh, I wish I had known so much earlier um, well, I, I guess I've known this for a little while but how to automate something in here so let's say we've got some sort of a synthesizer sound that we want to mess with. Let's go into the mini 700s and split lead. And let's say we want to automate stuff. So we go into our audio, we go into our contact because we didn't get fancy with all the routing. And we lay down some sort of a bass. Sound. And that's like our intro or whatever. But we want it to change, but we don't want to do it in post. We don't want to route it into our mixer and do things. We want to mess with actual settings in here. Well, this is what you have to do in FL Studios. It may be easier in your DAW because in FL Studios, you right click and you get learn MIDI CC automation. But this has to do with working with external hardware. Like you've got a MIDI controller of some kind that has knobs and you can link it up like that. You simply just right click and then turn your knob and then turn that knob. In Evo Studios, you may still need to have the multi-link to controller on for that to work. But this is how you automate the knobs. You come up here to the wrapper. I'm not sure what program is used to host to open up plugins in your DAW, but it's probably something similar. But you open it up and you go to browse parameters. And then bang, all the parameters are listed here. But you might say, how the freak am I supposed to find the one that I want? And all you have to do is simply turn it. And on Evo Studios, it takes you right to that one. It even highlights it for you. And so maybe we want to bring the drive up. So we right click, create automation clip. And then you got to do it again, unfortunately. Browse parameters. Maybe we want to move dirt around, create an automation clip. And now we can do that. And it 
it'll be easier if these things are a bit longer to hear the difference. So, and if we look at our controller, we see our knobs moving. And that's really cool. So that's how you automate stuff in here on the performance view. After that, it's just sort of messing around and getting to know your instruments. And one thing that kept blowing my mind when I first got contact was how many folders are in folders are in folders. I mean, there are probably still things I haven't found in this ridiculous, I bought complete. And so as a result, there are still things I probably haven't touched um, or left unscathed thus far. But you can just go into endless amounts of stuff they already have. So it's really a great resource. And once you know how to do that, you can really start to create some dynamic uh, libraries. At this point, if you follow it all the way up to here, you should now be able to use preset libraries and grasp their concept. Now, some things like Drum, Drum Lab are built around different principles. Uh, it's a very different kind of layout, so you're going to need to go and read the manual, maybe catch their vision on what they were thinking, because they have different mics you can use and just all this stuff. So go ahead and experiment with that. From here on out, we're probably just going to start getting into the background of how to set this stuff up, because this stuff's like black voodoo magic back here. This is what makes it happen. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. If you think there should be more information about the performance view, maybe something I left out, drop that down. I'm down for doing a little bit more if there's something I really missed. Other than that, have a blessed day. Oh, my God.